The final module in this series on reading development are the considerations for those students who are bilingual. Just as we distinguish between language difference and a language disorder, it is important to look at reading difficulties with a similar lens. Some other considerations for our students who are English language learners, culturally and linguistically diverse, or low SES populations. So, reading difference versus disorder. There's a lot of factors that influence performance. And so I want you to be conscious and thinking about these things with each of our students as we question what is it that is the primary hurdle to our students to become an independent reader. Because once we can isolate that primary hurdle, we can intervene appropriately. And there may be multiple, but we need to first really hold ourselves accountable, not to making assumptions, but to figuring out why our student may need more support through the process of developing as a reader. So I want you to think about how are they doing as a reader in their first language versus their second? And how are they able to demonstrate their content knowledge in L1 versus L2? If they're a successful reader in L1, we can isolate and figure out that there's a distinct reason to what's going on in L2 that's not related to reading development, but maybe something else. So we need to really make sure that we, if we can't ourselves assess the L1, reach out and collaborate with colleagues who can help us to know our child and our students' strengths. I think it's so crucial that we also find out more about this student who is bilingual. Are they a simultaneous bilingual? They learned that both languages at the same time? Or was it sequential, like me, who learned my second language as a teenager? What exposure do they have to each of those languages currently? And an important influencing factor that is layered on top of the bilingual status, but important, although distinct, to factor in is, is the student and their family's socioeconomic status. There are many factors to think about, and we need to own that we are often one of the variables. Um, when I look across students in different classrooms, it's important to think even about teacher variables or the access to different language programs. We noticed a pattern, unfortunately, in one year when various first graders were being referred to our student study team. And it took a little while to notice the pattern, but what we found was the common thread was it was actually a shared kindergarten teacher. It wasn't about each of these students having an issue with reading. It was that they hadn't had that same exposure in kindergarten that the peers in the other three cohorts had. So we need to own as educators that we play a very important role in ensuring that our students have access to high quality research-based education, but to never make an assumption that it's a deficit in the child, but rather what environmental factors are occurring that could be leading to this learning difference. Only then can we be confident in ever determining that there's a true reading disability if we can assure that the difference in their reading development isn't due to one of these other environmental factors. We need to think about cultural differences as well as educational and individual factors. How interesting it is to see how different a child reads when they're reading a book of interest that they've selected on their own. So think about what motivates your students, what interests them, and how we can get an authentic assessment, not by giving them the same, every student in, in the class perhaps the same reading. And there's a time for that. I understand if you want to do your, your running records, that's wonderful. But we also don't want to stop there. 
we become detectives and need to gather all the information in order to make sure we can say with confidence whether something is just going to need some more time, maybe some tier two intervention, or if there may really be a disability present. I can't stress enough the importance of doing this for all children, but especially our students who are bilingual, because we know far too many students who are bilingual are referred to special education and receive an IEP simply because not enough of us understand how to really tease apart what are the influences of being bilingual versus a true disability. And so I look forward to colleagues continuing to research these topics because we're all still learning and growing. We still need to make sure that new assessments are developed so that we can all say with confidence what is difference versus disability. Something to consider. In their first language, a student may use more informal discourse, but yet then be expected to use very academic language in their second language. So a, a higher demand in the language that they have had less exposure to. So we need to think about the expectations that we're setting. It's also important to realize that students may not have had a full range of literacy experiences in either language. How wonderful when we can transfer the first language literacy abilities to the second, but that may not always be present if the student wasn't of school age when they um, had that exposure to L1. We need to learn the specific sound system, words, grammar, and text structure of each language. The more we are equipped to understand another language and, and build up our capacity as educators, the better we'll be able to differentiate. I have so many examples of students who perhaps just apply the syntax of their first language to English and perhaps to a monolingual teacher or one who is not as familiar with other languages, it sounds as though there's some real struggle on the part of the student. But again, let's not assume deficit within the child, but think about environmental factors. And then we realize, oh wow, it's actually quite brilliant the students just applying their knowledge of their first language to the second. As much as possible, and I know it's not possible for us to know all of the world's wonderful languages, but when we can, let's use the native language as a foundation for learning the second. Build upon prior knowledge, life experience, and celebrate the cultural background during literacy activities. There's a wonderful author from Los Angeles named Gary Soto. He has a collection of books that range all ages from wonderful picture books all the way to chapter books and collections of poems. There's truly something for every reader. And he does a beautiful job of celebrating the Latino culture. And so I love using his books in my classroom and how fun it is to see the faces of my students who are bilingual in Spanish and English glow when they get the joke before their, their English only peers and they get to be the ones to explain why that was so funny or what that word means. Select diverse written materials that are meaningful for your students, that facilitate a print rich environment and implement a program designed to address both your students' strengths and their needs. When you have the wonderful opportunity to work with students of diverse cultures. It's important to think of all these considerations, but also realize what a wonderful way to celebrate cultures from all around the world and teach your other students about these wonderfully diverse cultures.